Saturday. This video is gonna be about um, doing the different weave techniques. Guys, if uh, you are new to Amazing Crosses Unstrung Unfiltered, my name is Smitty, I am the owner of this goulage, and uh, thank you so much for checking us out. Anyway, um, let me just, without further ado, let me finish up the mains real quick, and then um, I can show you the different techniques that I use to weave. So, um, without further ado, let's get it started. Guys, uh, thank you for checking us out. If you have not checked out our Instagram, please, please find us um, on Instagram. Uh, it's within the description below. I kind of have a link to it. So please go check that on out. If you love what you see, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, put some comments. What, what kind of method you guys use to, uh, to weave? So I, as always, I'm gonna start off uh, these mains the way I always do, or I just started doing, which is um, I use the clamp on the inside. So it's kind of a modified Yazuki method. All right, what's going on? We already have a live viewer. So what's up? I hopefully you were you saw us live on Instagram. So I'm just gonna repeat what I did there, kinda. So, uh, starting clamp on the inside. Pull that first, that first main. This gives me an option to have um, full, 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 or as maximum as possible, close to the to the frame or to the grommet area. Um, a lot of uh, stringers believe that the first couple strings or the, or the, the center strings are very important. So to have the least amount of drawbacks or whatnots is, is very, very vital. And what I love about this um, Babula machine is it's a 360 mechanism. I'm doubling up on one side. I don't have to, um, you know, Keep on switching. So even if I didn't use this method, I could do this without having any interference. So which I think it's awesome. Um, which uh, there's no other machine right now that can do what it, um, what the racket station can do. Look, I'm doubling up. There's two clamps on one side right here. It just gives you what's called a little sense of insurance, a sense of more security, uh, in my opinion. Now, after I got my three mains here, I go on the other side with that starting clamp off. Take that off, release this bad boy. Now I can come here, clamp that off, and we're back on track, guys. Um, there's another video on this method solely, however, today it's about talking about the weave. So the weaving guy, that's probably 90% of stringers say that that's gonna be the worst thing they, they have to deal with, which is weaving, because it's an up and down motion, right? It's, it's very tedious, it's very, um, you know, you need that finesse and everybody has their own skills. Some, a lot of Europeans I see they do the, um, the weaving, you know, and they do it with such elegance. I think of some, a lot of other, um, what I see here in the States and a lot of U.S. stringers is like, uh, I wouldn't say we do the lazy way, but we just kind of snake it on through. Let's just get this done. You know what I mean? There, there's no, I mean, you know, uh, I saw the French, uh, you know, they're like, a, they're doing bam, 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 and they do it so quick. Um, and I, I do a modified version of that sometimes, and, 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 it's, and it works for me. However, if I was doing that all day, I would definitely get pretty much annoyed with the whole weaving. I do like to push and pull um, what other people do, what others, you know. And especially, I'm stringing with multi-filament. Guys, I'm stringing with Wolsa NXT, guys. This is probably one of the best multi-filament there on the market. Um, there's a separate video also talking about how, how great it is because uh, it is um, guys don't be scared of that little phrase that's what it's supposed to do those small little micro fibers they're t they're taking the blows for you and everybody's talking crap about it at the same time like, man it feels great but you know it's all a phrase out on me but um, I feel like I feel like that's what they're there for it's supposed to um, these small multi filaments you know are there to break and absorbs those those kinetic energy coming from the ball and just kind of, you know, the the rubbing and the movement from from the snapback, it breaks you know those small little fibers. You should be glad that it's advertised as it is. It's multiple filaments. If if it didn't fray much, I mean, it's probably didn't have, it's not as what's it called? It's not as fine. So that's that's my two cents. So um, continuing to do this. This is a, um, a 93 square inch head, so we're gonna have definitely excess of strings here. No worries about that. No worries. No worries, mate. No worries. No worries. If you have questions, just kind of hit me up on the comment below. 
Um, you know, you know, I, I, I love the feedback that everybody gives us, and I, I think it's very insightful. Um, I, I enjoy that you guys have not disliked my video yet, so I'm very excited about that. Um, but I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to see what type of different techniques that everybody kind of comes up with. So at this point, tie off. So we're coming to the uh, the nitty gritty of um, what's it called? The weaving method. So ooh, I'm excited to show you what we do. Um, and like I said, don't forget to show me what you do too. You guys should uh, you guys should um, come on Instagram and maybe do like a joint session so we can both like hey piggyback on each other, guys. Uh, tie offs on the cross here is on the seventh main or the or a seventh hoop or top, whatever you call it. Hold that string, release the clamps, boop, for the minimal drawback as possible. I love these nippers, these are Tronics nippers, and uh, people who do jewelry and stuff or have to cut wires or cut small, fine. Um, this is this is what they use, guys. This, this is the best. Oh, ooh, da, da, da. Sometimes you just gotta finesse that. What does mean? It means being amazing, Charles. So with that, tench, pull that, hold that knot. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. So now it's to the fun part. All right. If I could find my NXT. There it is, guys. Uh, let me show you in this video. Uh, I like your video. Hey, Oliver, man. Awesome, awesome. So, dude, this is a great way to... Sh different techniques to do weaving. So, um, depends on what you're doing. This is another way to uncoil the string. I, 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 was, I saw this at a tournament. Somebody was doing it. I was like, dude, that's genius. So, what you can do is... Un What's it called? Um get all so you don't get any kinks or you know get any not that's the one thing i hate the most is when you when you do this it's like man it, it blows up in your hand luckily this doesn't have too much memory so it's great um or another reference i've been doing the 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 racket length eight times and that was definitely way worth it so it's one two three four five six seven actually i think I'm, i can steal with seven because um seven and pinch what happened was, this is a 93 square inch head. You don't need that much strings. All right, so here we go. Ah, uh, now I'm stringing with a head speed. With... Oh, that's what's up, man. Uh, do you like the gravity? So, um, I don't know if you're doing the same method, but check this out, Oliver. If you're not doing this, maybe you should think about it. A lot of people, let me see. I'm, I, I, I pre-weave my, um, what's it called? My second string here. So before I show you all the other technique, I want to show you this first. And a, a lot of arguments have been been occurring because of this. So I go to, I'll do the one, the top. Right? Here's the thing. A lot of people right now would pull tension on this. Uh, well, actually, no. Yeah. We'll pull tension on the first one. So what happens is, you know, you people who do the starting clamp here. You would pull that first string right here, like beep. This gets tightened, and they go into the second one. I want to negate that. Here's the reason why, all right? Look, I'm going to put this loose as a goose, or whatever. I'm going to pre-weave this third one, because I want to have that soft weave when I pull the second, so... And here's maybe maybe we'll have the videos of how to, to weave. Um, and I'll show you a different method right after this. So, but this one I want to show you how to do this starting. All right. So, I'm still fanning. I'm still fanning. All right. Here we go. People would... I'm tensioning up the second string. Look. I'm not saying the first one has reference tension. But the machine has made the sound and beep for this second string right here. So I can say truly with this constant pull machine, I'm... Pulling reference tension at 53 right now. And as I clamp it, I should still have 53 there. Now I can go to do a soft weave on here. The reason I do this is when I finish this whole thing, I can come back to this first one, pull this, 
give the reference tension on that top thing and we'll be fine. What people do is they would pull tension on the first one, finish it up, pull tension again, and then tie it off. You double tensioning right there. I mean, I feel like that's excess, right? You're trying to do. All right, so without further ado. So different techniques. So this is what I do personally. Here's one method, guys. What I would do is get the length, especially with poly. Poly works great. I would get the length of the, the racket. Um, and this is what I do, right? I, it's, I, it's like pity packing or, you know. So I would get this and I would just tap it. Look, it's called a boomerang effect. If you just tap it up and down and you can, and you can finesse this up and down. Look, look how the, the tail end just whips through everything. It just guides its way through. So it's up and down. I'm doing this slow so I can show you how it's done. And then you can do that. So basically you use that momentum to fling or flick or I call it the, I won't say the boomerang, but I call it maybe the, I should call it a flicker, I guess. And it, and it guides right through. So that's, that's one method. Let me show you coming on this side. All right. So get the length of the thing. And look, I'm just tapping it. See how I'm just tapping up and down. Up and down, up and down. And you're right through it. No worries. No worries. I can pull, and this is a soft weave, so look, you can just pull it straight through. No issues. Pull tension on that one. So how do you like that method? All right, want me to do it again? This works really great with poly, because poly has that, that, that memory, that stiffness, and it will fling right through it. You, you'll, get it. you'll get it through with no problem. So what you do is get the full length and just tap it, all right? Once you get it up and down, up and down, up and down. See how this tail end just flings through? Because you, look, it just, it just it wants to slide right through there. So that's amazing. So that's one method, all right? If you missed it, when this video goes on, um, you know, goes on our channel, you can kind of just review that. So I call that the, the flicker, I guess. You can flick it through. It works great on polys um, or string that has a lot of memory. If, if you work on 4G or anything, it will be amazing. So next method of weaving. This is my what I use personally. It's the push and pull. Actually, the push, actually. I like to push my string. And you work in diagonals. You see this? So you don't have to. Remember the last one? I would ask you to pull the full length. This one, just get enough to, to run that first one. So you, this is under over. So two fingers guide across. Look how fast as that is, right? And, and with time, you'll know if you misweaved or not. Look, soft weave, you can still pull that, no issues. Look, off the back, I, I've, been, I've been messing around talking to you so much, I, I've done almost got a kink. Also, another trick, guys, you know you have turntable locks, right? If I pull tension right here, see how the string is right against this, um, the mount, or the, bra uh, the, the bracket mount on, on the two o'clock? If I pull this, there's so much, uh, let me show you, this is what it would look like if you pulled. It would be rubbing against that, that pole or the pillar right there. What I want you to do is get to an angle where it's free flowing, use your turntable lock, either you have an electronic one or you have one on your thing. Look. Now I can't move it. When I pull tension, it's away from that pillar. So no unnecessary you know, damage to it. And you can just unlock it. It just takes a few more seconds. That's, that's the difference between a great stringer and a, and a magnificent stringer, right? So let me show you that method again, guys. All right, this is what I do. I grab the distance and I push. I'm gonna do it slow so you guys see it. Working diagonals. See that? And you're going across. It's like you're going across the Atlantic, right? And then you bring it up. This is the fastest. I've seen a lot of US counterparts doing this. Um, the Europeans do it a little different, which I'll show you in, another, in, another, in a second here. So let me show you that one more time. All right. So I will look at an angle and then pop it right there, boom, see that? And you can just work your way up. If your hand's a little slippery, then maybe you can you know, use a little dry, I don't, I don't know. 
But that, this, this method works for me. The other method I see a lot of people do is on the comeback, which I, this is, I don't prefer this because I, maybe I suck at it. I haven't, people do the pool, which is amazing. What, what, what they do is they would come on this side and they would pull the string. It looks like I'm doing a great job now, but it's very uncomfortable to me. There's at a certain point I don't have enough grip, especially if your finger is kind of not dry, you can slip on it. So did you see what happened there? So it's, you're pulling it towards you in a diagonal, which that one turned out pretty darn well. I am very surprised, very surprised. Get too close. So let's try it on this side. What you would do is you would feed it on the other side and then you would pull it towards your body. So this is what it would look like. All right. So you would grab the tail end and it's, it's working. It's actually doing pretty well. However, it'll be at some point where it's just awkward. I, I just either, I don't have enough um, tackiness in my fingers. See, it, for me, I see people just kind of guide right through. Maybe it works a little better on certain type of non-slick strings. One more attempt on that. So this is what I'm talking about. You would, you would um, have the string and then you would pull it through. I see people do it like super quick. I haven't really finessed this technique nor that I want to. Look at that, see? Uh, for me, uh, it just does not work. All right. All right, next technique. It's kind of the, uh, the weave. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, European finesse this very well. So it's almost like that, that, that tap and play. However, um, it's just like, they're just weaving the strings like, you know, they're just kind of grabbing it through and just weaving it. I use this method sometimes going, going, a, going a certain way. So I'll show you it again. Should I do it slower? Yeah, I probably should. So basically, I'm just, you know, just weaving it through. So one, going this way, I can use it on top. The other way, I can use my finger. See how I can just whip right through that? So this is what I'm talking about. It's basically just grab and go. And this one, I'm coming from the under, so I'm just kind of pushing on through. It's just weave, so it's just like, um, it's just like you're pinching up, pulling it. So that's another method you can use. That's pretty, that's pretty. At some point you're gonna run out of string so you can't really pre-weave. However, until then, I can. But this is, I, I do this going, going up the string. See how that just works out really well? I'm living on the edge here. I actually, um, what's it called? left a lot of slack. So I'm running out of string, so these last two, three, uh, these last two, three crosses gotta be, um, what's it called? Um, oh, I guess a hard weave, because I, I don't have enough slack. I'm conserving some string, obviously. So if you didn't, if you had a full 20, maybe you could probably still do this. Um, and this is a 93 square. So I did 17 feet, because I was trying to conserve strings. <laughs> This is a bad move, I don't know. But yeah, guys, tell me in the comment section below, what do you use for a method? Do you do, do, you do anything different than what we did? I, I think those, I covered most of what I, what I use. See, this one is just kinda, I feel very bad for bigger handed, uh, bigger fingers, I guess, people, because it's hard to get through. <laughs> Guys, thanks for checking us out. If you have not subscribed and you like the video, please check it on out. Uh, it gives me motivation to do more. I was like, hey, does anybody out there care about string? Dude, I, I really feel like stringers are, are kind of left behind in the shadows. Every once in a while, there's a smile, like expose, like five minute video about how to freaking, um, if you're a, a tournament stringer, and, and that's about it. So I, I, I wanna, I want it to be a more common thing, which brings players and stringers together. And it's like, hey, 
you know, we all can't live without each other, right? So, so there. Uh, I use a Wilson Pro Knot, and um, in another video already, I did show you how to do that. Use a cam action clamp. Make hold, hold that end, so you don't lose any slack. Now, remember, I didn't, I, I didn't pull the first string here with reference tension. I finished up. Now I come back up. This is my first time pulling tension on that first um, cross. So I didn't do a double tension. If you would have pulled that reference tension the first time and come back and do the second time, you basically did a double, double tension. That being said, guys, thanks for checking us out. Please check us out on Instagram, and I hope everybody's having a good Saturday. Peace.